It's about creating conversations. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Matt Kunitz. What are you doing, man? You just hanging out today talking to a bunch of people around the country? (laughs) This is what I'm doing all morning long. (laughs) Isn't this the fun part of it all? Because, I mean, mean, you have busted some serious tail making sure that Wipeout is is talked about on this side of the flat screen. And then now you just kind of get to talk about it. It's almost like you're the inside sleeve of that album. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, look, it's, it, for me, um, I have the best job in the world. I get to go to work and laugh at John Cena and Nicole Byer <laughs> and watching people wipe out all day long. And then to be able to share it, right? So it's like a lot of people go to work and they, they might have a cool job, but they don't get to actually share what they do. I get to like share what I do with the world and it's available for everyone to see. And so when I, you know, when I come home and I tell my family like, oh my God, it was so hilarious. It was amazing what I saw today. In a couple months, they get to turn on the TV and watch it. When when that happens, how do you keep it a big secret? Because I can't do that. When when we would do radio station promotions, they would say, okay, this is what we're going to do for the big promotion. And they would say, don't let Arrow know about it because he'll tell people about it. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. The shows that I do, they're not, you know, I like to say I do popcorn entertainment, you know. Um, Wipeout and Fear Factor, these are not big secret shows. It, they're kind of big, dumb, silly shows. You're going to tune in, you're going to laugh. So we don't have to keep terrible, like, oh my God, if they find out, it's going to destroy, you know, for example, Survivor. You would never want to for it to get out who, after 18 episodes, finally won that show. But but our show, every episode is a unique episode. You're not You're not tracking uh, one contestant throughout the whole season. So there's not a lot of big secrets. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's just a big, fun show. Tune in, laugh, put all your stresses behind you. And I think that's what makes this show work is that we're living in a really stressful time right now, right? We just went through COVID, you know, war is breaking out. And, and like, but you can turn on the TV and just the, all that just goes away. You don't have to think very hard. Just sit back, relax, and laugh. You are so right about that because a lot of anxiety is is dropped off when when you watch a show like Wipeout because you're sitting there so involved with each and every player on on the, on that TV and then when when they get wiped out you're going damn god that wasn't me but we there's a lot of oohs and ahs and wows and all that kind of stuff where it just it helps us release all that energy. Yeah, you know, I have um I'm married and my wife and I have very different tastes in, in television and movies. I always want to watch things that are super dramatic and yeah. And uh, might be sad. And she's like, I have enough, like, just stress in life. Like, why would I want to do that? Like, just let me turn on Wipeout and laugh. You know, let me just, let me not think about life. Let me, you know, it's just for her. And I think this is probably true for most of, of the viewer. TV is, is an escape. And there's no better escape than laughing. Don't you think that Wipeout is, is that one show on TV where we all think we could do it? But, I mean, we won't try out for it, but we know we could do it. I can't tell you how many um, radio DJs I've spoke with that have said, you know, I want to be on that show. And I'm like, great, come on the show. Like, yeah. I will have you on the show. And not one of them ever actually <laughs> shows up to be on the show. We're all talk, man. You know how radio people are. We're all talk. That's all we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arrow, I've got, a, I've got a spot for you on season two. It's waiting. <laughs> come on. Let's do it. Man, to work with John Cena and Nicole Byer, I mean, I'm, the, the, you guys really, you know, they always say that that in radio, in order for a morning show to work, you have to have a dick, a dork, and a deer. And and the three of you play those roles. I mean, what? and you've got to keep switching it up and all that kind of stuff. But, man, I mean, it, it, there's harmony in the three of you. You know, um, it's interesting because uh, when we put, when we had the idea of John Cena and Nicole being on the show, um, we, you know, number one, we didn't think we could ever get them, and we were we were shocked that we could, but we didn't do any chemistry testing. We we were just like, if we can get these two, this will be amazing. Um, and it turns out that they, I mean, they love each other, and it's just so great, and you see that chemistry, but. Nicole, it, she treats him like the big brother and she's just constantly on him. <laughs> you know, if he's ever done a bad movie, she's going to remind him pretty much in every episode of whatever bad movie he may have done <laughs> in his career. He has an amazing career, but she acts like she has no idea that he was a huge, you know, wrestling star or that he was, you know, in Fast and Furious or Suicide Squad. She'll pick that one awful movie he did and just, just hound him on it. And that's, that's what makes it fun because it's like it's like you're watching a brother and sister up there. So right, you are so right about that because then we sit here on this side of it and we're we're laughing and then we're going, God, what are they going to say next? What's going to happen next? And then we get back to the action, but we still pay attention to what the storyline is between what's what they're talking about. 
Yep. And we told them, just be yourselves. We don't want you coming on and being like the hosty host kind of person. Yeah. Just go out there, be yourself, because the audience is going to live vicariously through you and how you're watching this. You know, we, we don't tell them what's coming up. You know, we don't say, oh, this, you know, oh, on this thing, they're going to hit it. And there's going to be a big surprise when they come around the corner because we want them to be surprised, just like the audience. Is there a secret sauce to creating a successful reality show? You know, I, I think it's about putting ordinary people in extraordinary situations. Mm-hmm. You know, these are not Uber athletes. We designed the world's largest, most crazy obstacle course for people that have no business being on an obstacle course. How do you design that obstacle course in the way that, I mean, because it has to start off on a computer screen and then, and then to see it come to life. Are you in on those meetings? Yeah, it actually, it literally starts on a napkin, right? I really? Mean, like somebody doodles <laughs> oh, something on a napkin, right? It takes a while before it gets to that computer screen, and it does eventually get to a computer screen because, you know, it takes months and months to build these things. So someone on a napkin draws, you know, the big balls, and then, and then that ends up, you know, an artist will then do an artist rendition of it. And then we go and we pitch it to the network, and we show somebody bouncing off these big balls. And then it goes to a CAD artist. That's a, a computer artist where he will, because you know now you have to really design it and build it. Like what's going to support those big balls and how are they going <laughs> to stay strapped and how are they going to be buckled into the concrete? People don't think about that, which obviously we don't really want you thinking about that because we want you to just escape and, and watch the show. But it will take us four months to build each course and the course is constantly changing. So there's a lot that goes into it. Don't you think that, that a wipeout has reinvented the belly flop, the back flop, the, the sloppy flop and all that kind of stuff? Because I mean, it's like nobody lands the same way twice. It's like a, it's like a fingerprint. Well, what I, what I'm most proud of, which is, I think really we're the only show that has it. It's the scorpion. Ooh, That's yeah. when you hit something belly first and your legs come up from behind <laughs> you and tap the back of your head like a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> see, you're gonna have to put out. Women a... are more limber, so you'll see more yeah. scorpions with the women for some reason than you do with the men. But um, it, every time I see a scorpion, it just makes you cringe. Like, oh, <laughs> but that's what makes the show so much fun to watch. You're gonna have to put out a book, Matt, and have it be like a book of definitions, and then show pictures of every th- every different way that people land, fly, do different things. Like a coffee table book of wipeouts. That's a great idea. And you know what? You're the man that can do it because you always give yourself permission to be creative. I love that about your spirit dude i want to keep you know doing things that excite me and so i need to keep it fresh and 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 that's what we do we keep it fresh and fun and exciting absolutely please come back to this show anytime in the future matt the door is always going to be open for you thank you errol you be brilliant today mister all right you too